welcome to another episode of Thrive Forward, a podcast created for you, where we provide you tools, resources, and connections around your wealth, health, and mindset in order to educate and empower you into action. Hosted by yours truly, Shannon Foreman, and a production of Forethought Planning. This is kind of, uh, this is a little bit surreal for me. Uh, Naomi and I met back when I was still working in corporate America. And um, we, we met via good old social media. We did. <laughs> and, um, and then back in the day when, you know, you could meet people in person, um, you can't do that anymore. Uh, we just like ran into each other. You came to my office after like yoga or something like that. And we hit it off. And then fast forward like six months, seven months later, we were in the same mastermind and you were a big part of my life as I was starting my own journey as an entrepreneur. So I'm like so excited to have you share your story today. And I'm so grateful for all the support that you have given me through this transition. Aww. Well, I'm excited to be here and it does seem very surreal. I was going back to how we first met on Instagram, which I'm like, that's why I have to say I love social media. And I know sometimes people are like, oh, I'm going to get off of it. And I'm like, why? I meet the most fabulous people. I mean, if I had not put myself out there, you and I would have not connected. So yeah. That's where I'm just like, I, I love social media. I love watching you grow and seeing what has happened in your life and talk about taking charge, especially, you know, when everyone's like, oh, 2020, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my word, I have friends that are thriving in this space. And you are one of them, Shannon. So hats off to you for all that you're doing right now. Well, thank you. So are you. Um, in fact, we, I was talking to one of our peers um, the other day, and I can't remember who it was off the top of my head, but somebody was like, Naomi is just like, she's on fire right now. Um, and so I'd love for you to share, um, of, of course, throughout our conversation today, just around this roadmap to wellness that you are creating, which I think is so fantastic. But let's start a little bit with your story and how your wellness journey even began. Oh, well, it's definitely, it's a story for sure. I was um, diagnosed with breast cancer in December of 2011. And I will say that came out of left field. Yes and no, it didn't. Because one, I had actually felt a lump back in the springtime of 2011. We were in Hawaii and um, I came in from after being playing in the sand and the and you know how you like get full of sand mm -hmm. or playing, I'm sorry, playing in the waves. And I was like, oh, that feels like something. And then you started to like dismiss it. And then I was supposed to like go in for my annual and then life happens. And then fast forward to December and I went in for my annual exam. And of course, she's like, oh, you have a lump. It's probably nothing. You are young. I mean, that's what everyone hears. You're young. It's probably nothing. Yeah. How but old were you? Um, 36, going to be 37 soon. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I think it's something. Um, and now knowing all that I know, um, there's a reason why it was something. And it's just, everything happens for a reason. I'll say that. And the week before I was diagnosed, um, my husband accepted a new, new job to move us from the city of Chicago to Atlanta. And I tell people our lives changed in an instant from everything from my health as well as our wealth all changed overnight. And the reason being is my husband accepted a new job and it was actually going to be a pay cut, but it was actually a step ahead for him. But the cost of living in Atlanta is less than living in the city of Chicago. And that's where we were at the time. So my sure. husband in finance, he was like, Naomi, I know it seems like we're, we're taking a step back financially, but actually in reality, we will be taking a step ahead. Right. And he was absolutely right. We would. And then all of a sudden, a week later, I get diagnosed with breast cancer and our doctors say, um, you're not moving anywhere. So now Shannon, he has accepted a job, less money. <laughs> I am now thrown into this hole of, well, we need to take care of your health. And I had to put my job on hold and I was an entrepreneur 
And so everything changed in an instant, everything, our relationship, our financial relationship, my, my health, friendships, everything changed overnight. And that's where I get really passionate about wellness and dig in the well before you need it. Um, Mm Because I think Mm -hmm. that is so important. We'll say that again, digging the well before, before you need it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's where people have to start to recognize what is wellness. And that's one thing that I love to talk about is like, what really is wellness? And I know you and I have talked about that before in the past that it's just not diet and exercise. Right. <laughs> please <laughs> preach, please preach. <laughs> Yes. Let's talk about it. Like what is wellness and like, how did you, you know, throughout your journey, because that was a huge part of what, what defined it for you. Right. Yeah. So not to mention you had two little girls while you were going through all of this too. Yeah. So when you hear the words cancer, you know, you have a couple of choices. You're either going to think, Oh my word, I'm going to die and I'm just going to do whatever, or you can thrive. And I really decided that I was going to thrive. And I was going to do my own research, be my own advocate, and really learn how I could find the silver linings out of all this. And I definitely have done that. I had not only one tumor, I had two tumors. So I had like a double whammy. And I always tell people it was a blessing. It was a blessing that I felt the one because they said I would have never felt the other one. Both of them were invasive. Um, And, you know, I didn't want to do chemotherapy, Shannon. But like you said, I had two little girls. My husband looked at me and goes, you are absolutely crazy if you think you're going to green juice this and it's going to be the way to go. Mm -hmm. And so I look at where we are now, you know, almost nine years later, social media, where it's at. There's so much resources out there. Nine years ago, it wasn't the platform where it is today. Um, And that was a really almost foreign area when it came to healing of doing more of the alternative things. So I did what I thought was best for me. I did a combination of holistic as well as conventional. But the thing was, is I became my own advocate. And I told my doctors, you know what, I will do chemotherapy, but I'm only doing four rounds. Um, And my oncologist said, I've never had anyone negotiate with me before. (laughs) And And I really paused with that because I thought, here we are, we are in charge of our bodies. We are the only ones that really know besides God what's going on. Mm -hmm. Why would we want to advocate for ourselves? But people don't, they don't do their research. They don't do their due diligence. They don't go to multiple doctors. And that's where when I mentor survivors, I say, go to one, go to two, go to three people, see what their opinions are. Because a lot of times they're all over the boards. Mm-hmm. And I've seen that with a couple of girlfriends of mine now that I've talked to. The one said, oh, you need to do like 18 rounds of chemotherapy. The next doctor said, oh, you don't need to do anything. And I was like, well, you clearly need to go get a third opinion because you have polar opposites. Um, and that's where I think people just have to be a student and continually be open-minded and educate themselves. And be like, my husband says this all the time. He's like, be curious, Naomi. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a great word. Curious is a fantastic word. Yeah. Instead of resting on our our laurels or what we know, right? Like we we just we commit to always growing. Our brains are such fantastic muscles that mm-hmm. um, it they it grows when you when you teach it new things. Yes, and yeah. it has it has space to do that. Yeah. So I just was curious. I was curious to be like, hmm, why did I get cancer? And I will take full ownership now. I don't blame myself saying like, oh my word, it's my fault. But I take ownership. I look back at everything and I was like, huh, I didn't make probably the best choices in my life. Huh. Even though I was like an athlete and doing stuff, does that make you healthy? No. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we, we are always going I, my body was breaking down prior to all this. So when I look back and reflect, my hormones were out of whack, except when I would go see someone about my migraines, it was like, oh, here's a pill, just take a pill versus saying, let's pause and like look at the root cause. What is causing mm-hmm. all these things? And I think that's the thing that people have to look at, like what is wellness? It's not just diet and exercise, it's mindfulness. It's 
also like what is causing stresses in your life? Is it your financial health? Mm Because that's another big part of wellness is Mm -hmm. having that in order. Um, Your spirituality, you know, there is the community. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing. Like I love the fact that you and I are in community together with so many other great women and men. I think that's really important to have a strong community and have gratitude. Like there's so much to be grateful for. So oh, wellness yes. is so much more than just working out and, you know, some fad diet, you know, oh, are you keto? Oh, are you intermittent fasting? Like all these things right. that are that, you know, before way back when, and you're, you're probably too young to really have like knowing about like the Atkins diet. Oh and, no, I remember the okay. Atkins diet. <laughs> You know, it's just all those, or then there was the the South Beach diet. I mean, there's been so many type of diets. And the reason being, Shannon, is stop to think about it. Your body and my body are totally different. Mm -hmm. Our makeup, our genetic makeup is different. That's why we cannot say, all right, Shannon, this is exactly what you should be doing. This is what your, you know, your best friend should be doing. Your, you know, husband should be doing. We can't. Because mm-hmm. our bodies and our genes are so different. What people have to understand, and that's where, you know, I'm in the, the field of nutrigenomics and epigenetics, one of my businesses, and it's really interesting is around biohacking, that we have the ability to change our gene expressions in a good way or a bad way. And think about that. Like the food, what we put in our body is really changing it, as well as our thoughts too. Mm. So we have the ability to almost change our chemistry within our own body just by our environment and what we put in it. Let's talk a little bit more about that because I think that especially during 2020 when we're kind of at this massive reset right? I feel like like it, it, a big reset button is getting pushed in so many different ways, right? Yeah. Um, how, do we, how do we take knowledge of that and empower ourselves to really take charge? What are things that people could do? Um, one, be open. Be open to learning new information. I think that's the biggest thing is we're not always going to hear stuff from our doctors or, you know, I think people think, oh, I got to learn it from this way or that way. I'm grateful that I've been open and I've learned stuff through other avenues. And, and I will tell people like, take what you need, leave the rest. Mm -hmm. Because the things that I've learned over like the, almost the nine years now of my wellness journey at the time, some of it, it was way too much. It was, it was like, I couldn't comprehend it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, Oh, now I know what they were talking about. Now it makes sense. I can digest that information now and use it. We are living in a very toxic environment mm-hmm. and, and it's true. We I'm have literally to- surrounded by screens right now. Yes, exactly. The Wi-Fi. What is that doing from a genetic standpoint? We look at our food sourcing, our food. You know, there's a reason why eating organic, eating local is really important. Um, there's a reason why we need to be drinking, you know, filtered water. There is a reason why we need to be looking at what we are using from um, our dish soap, our our laundry, as well as our cosmetics. Yeah, our personal care products. It it's all it all adds up um, because the the reason is the toxic load is getting so heavy on our cells from a cellular standpoint. And I, that's a whole other subject. Is basically it's free radical damage. And we are seeing more and more people being diagnosed with autoimmune. Mm -hmm. We're seeing more people being diagnosed with cancer. Well, it's because- Alzheimer's. Yes. It's because of the lifestyle. And it's linked. It's not genetics. It is linked to the environment and lifestyle. So if we know those things, what can we do to empower ourselves? Well, obviously, eating cleaner Mm -hmm. is going to be huge. Um, Reducing sugar. What does sugar do? It's causing inflammation in our body. You know, it's being mindful of those things. Sleep. Sleep is huge. Um, And the fact of the matter is everyone's going to bed with their phones. Yeah. So we have that blue light that's disrupting our sleep cycle, the natural circadian rhythm of our bodies. 
So going back to the basics of what our grandparents, our great grandparents were doing is really essential for our well-being because people like it or not, we are, we have to do something now to slow down this aging process. Cause that's really what it is. When you're aging, your cells are breaking down. And that's why you're seeing people younger and younger people. I look at people that are, you know, 12 years younger than me that are getting wrinkles and they're aging. Well, why is it? Well, you know what, guess what? They've grown up now in the generation of looking at a screen nonstop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially now too, when everything is virtual. I mean, I'm like on zoom all day long. Yeah. So then, you know what, let's protect our eyes. There's things that we can do like, you know, the blue light glasses. I know you, I, I should have grabbed mine. I, I, I have not. a pair literally like everywhere. I just bought some for the girls too. Cause yeah. my kids are on iPads. They, well, my girls and I, we share them. So a lot of times it's like one of those things now having teenage daughters, they grow legs and I'm like, where do <laughs> the glasses go? So the same thing, but it's, that was some of the things that are really important that we, we can be doing. And I think that's where people can do simple. I, I like to say I do teach simple biohacking tools. Um, big up, I'm big about going outside early in the morning, facing the sun letting our body's natural circadian rhythms get back into that groove. Our bodies naturally detox. I just did a podcast today about the detox pathways. Um, we are meant to detox. That's why we have to go to bed and rest because mm -hmm. our bodies repair itself. So the first thing in the morning, what we can be doing is drinking warm lemon water. Before warm you're lemon water. Yep. Before you're reaching for that, you know, glass of coffee or a like cup of coffee, I know you're a tea drinker like myself. I am, although I have this giant thing of water today. Yeah. So, you know, doing those things to help repair because you're, you're really truly helping the, the lymphatic system when you're first moving up. That's like the steward system, taking the whole garbage out. Another thing is right now, Shannon, people have been drinking more. Well, what is that doing? It's taxing our liver. Our yeah. liver is the main organ that is our detoxing organ in our body. We have three organs that we need to pay attention to. We have our kidneys. Well, people are not drinking enough water to help flush those kidneys. The liver, that is like the number one thing. And if you're, if you're drinking, what is that doing to your liver? Mm -hmm. And then also our colon. Well, we're hearing more and more a gut about gut, the gut health. Oh, and you know me. I love talking about this with you. Uh, yeah. So Naomi's like the one person in the world that I don't have to worry about talking about poop with. Oh, my word. My, my girls <laughs> are like having teenage daughters and me being on social media, they're like, I can always tell if I've had a day that I've been, I posted about poop. I, I wouldn't even know. Like, I'm like, they're going to come in any second now. And I usually will, like, I'll do a post and then I'll hear the boom, 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 since they're at home. Mom, Mom, are you kidding me? Oh, my friends all follow you. And I'm like, you know what? Someday they'll say, thanks to Mrs. Damask, I now know about what the Bristol poop chart looks like. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Right? They will thank me. Yes. So It's so, like, it's such a telling, well, I lost a friend, um, gosh, two years ago now to colon cancer. Um, and so like, I'm big at identifying those aspects of things. And, um, you know, she was, she was really trying the last two years of her life to be really, really healthy. Um, and she had really changed a lot of her lifestyle. What hadn't changed for her is her stress levels. Um, and that's it. Yeah, I know. I know you and I have talked about that from a mindfulness capacity. I just, I just got off a phone call before you um, with a CPA who's scheduling a, a, a appointment for him and I to meet with a new client, and uh, I said I don't take appointments before ten o'clock, and he was like, "Whoa, oh, okay," and I was like, "Yeah, no, never, like, that's my time." Yeah, and you are so good about that, and I think that's where people have to have healthy boundaries. And doing those things. Like today, I sat outside and just sat there and ate my lunch in the sunshine without my phone, without anything. I just sat there. Yeah, that sounds great. 
That's outside cool. today? Is it nice yeah. out? I don't know. I haven't been outside yet. Yeah. But it's like, it's those different things of taking a pause. There's mm-hmm. a reason why meditation is mm-hmm. key. But so many times people have a mind block around the word meditation. Yeah. So I tell people take a mindful break. Just literally learn to stop and breathe. I mean, that's yeah. we're, we're not. And it's in oxidative stress is one of the things that is the number one thing root cause of so many things, chronic illnesses in our lives. For me, it was cancer. And I look back, yes, I lived a very stressful life, but guess what? I didn't identify it as stress, but it really was stressful. You know, well, in the city of Chicago, ran my own businesses. My husband was in grad school, traveled internationally for his job as well. I ran my own company. And this little, little Asian doctor was like, lady, you are so stressed. And I'm like, I'm not stressed. This is life. But it doesn't have to be that way, right? It doesn't have to be that way. No. And that's where we have to realize, like, no, we can set up boundaries. We can be like Shannon and say, you know what? We're not going to do these things. We, we, can, we can schedule our day. And I'm really working hard. I know you're really good about your calendar. And I'm working at that. I'm very much an ADHD person. So I'm trying to button those things up and live by my calendar. Which yeah. is it's not a bad thing. I think for the longest time I, I had a mental block that I don't want to be there. I don't want to be that way, but it, it's really helpful to be more, I'm, I'm saying it's more mindful time now. Yeah. I think too, I mean, my, me, my mental health is something that's so important to me. And for me, anxiety was something that happened for me that was debilitating um, to a point where I've, I've had to take incompletes in college. I had to, you know, I've had to remove myself from jobs before um, because stress is too high. And a lot of times people are like, well, now you run your own company. Isn't that stressful? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. But I'm also a financial planner. So I put myself in this position in a financially stable way. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, like I get to make my decisions now. Also, I think understanding who we are and what drives us. Cause I know not, not every, the majority of people actually don't want to be entrepreneurs. No. Um, I think I just heard a statistic the other day that was like 80% of people don't want to be or 90% of, I don't even remember. I'm making that up now. I have no idea. Somebody said something. <laughs> I think it might actually be one of our mastermind sisters that I saw it on a story on Instagram. Well, but um, I think that there are some people out there that can't necessarily, or feel like they can't control their calendars. Right now is the perfect time to be able to set those boundaries, especially if you're a parent at home and you have distance learning um, and work environments, hopefully are much more understanding of the balance of being a parent and being a professional or an educator. I mean, shout out to the teachers who have to teach and then have kids at home. I mean, I can't even imagine what that's like. Um, but that's the that's the perfect element Uh I, I just recorded a, a podcast with a friend and uh, he said, no is a complete sentence. Ooh, I love it. Mm-hmm. You know what? And that's really important because I was a yes girl before cancer. Mm-hmm. You, you need something done. I mean, I was, you know, part of the junior league of Chicago. I did this. I did that. I was the room mom. I was the yes girl. I mean, I threw a fantastic parties. Everything had to be also in my world. Perfect. Right. And I look back, Shannon, the reason why I think I said yes, or I know I said yes, is because I knew I was like, I'll get it done and I'll do it the right way. I don't mm-hmm. have to then worry about asking someone and having, now I've, I've let those things go. Yeah. And, and it's so freeing just to be like, you know what, if it's not perfect, in my mind, who cares? It right. doesn't matter. I had um, my, my like epitome realization that I could not do things like that anymore. I had, the girls were young and we have this big like festival in our um, city that we live in in August. And it was beautiful outside and I love having people over and entertaining people and I invited a few of their friends. I also don't ever like to leave anybody out. So then it became a few, became a few more and a few more. And then finally, I'm standing at my screen door, having prepped everything for everybody to have tacos in a bag, um, you know, because that was something cool that the kids had requested. 
and there are 30 children in my backyard under the age of five. <laughs> and their parents are all drinking and having fun and no one is watching the children. <laughs> and I like literally am like, oh my God, I'm going to lose. Like my heart starts, like I start, I was sweating. My heart was racing. I literally had an anxiety attack in front of everyone. I couldn't go to the parade. People were like, what's wrong with Shannon? And I'm like, look, I finally looked at my best friend and she was like, you can't do this anymore. Perfect doesn't exist. Yeah. And you don't have to be friends with everybody and you don't have to include everybody and you, you, you got to do what's right for you and like practicing those boundaries. And I think this is by pushing the reset in 2020 is a great space to start doing that. Yeah. How about as we go into like holiday season and um, as we start having to spend time, how can we practice um, those boundaries and, and, and healthy boundaries, both, you know, all around, what does all around wellness look like during the, the holiday season? No, when most I'm people want to like binge, spend too much money, drink too much, hang out with the relatives that they hate. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I'm actually hosting an event. It's going to be November 17th, 18th, and 19th. You're actually one of my speakers. So <laughs> it's Happy Healthy Holidays, and we are bringing in experts. We did this beginning of this month in regards to around the topic of wellness for women, and we decided to keep going with this because, like you said, it's really important as the holidays come around to set up great ways of having the proper nutrition. Mm -hmm. And that's really key. It's like what we are fueling our bodies with. And, you know, prime example, my husband now has become aware of like, if he drinks certain like drinks, like coffees and stuff, and it's because it's so high in sugar, what it does to him and what it does with his mind. And I think being aware of how food affects us mm -hmm. can really in sugar is one of them. Like once you start to basically pinpoint these things of how you really feel when you're eating certain foods, you will be much more mindful. What um, about those people like me that like really like brownies and ice cream? Okay. Well then you know what? Either A, it's all in moderation to Shannon. I love you for this. <laughs> you know, I was, I was going there. You know, and, and I really, I, cause I'm still, I'm, I, I have been the girl after I got diagnosed, I went off the deep end. I sure. literally walked the deep end and I became sugar free, gluten free, basically fun free when it came to eating. And if I ate anything, if I would eat a brownie, Shannon, I literally went to the space of, oh my word, this is sugar. It's going to fuel the cancer. My cancer is going to come back and I'm going to die was like my mindset. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I look at food as energy from a, an energetic standpoint, as well as an energy standpoint. So energetically, if I'm with you right now and you're like, let's have this brownie and ice cream, I'm going to be like, heck yeah, we're, we're diving in. We're going to enjoy yeah. it. And let's laugh our socks off while we're yeah. enjoying it, right? It's not going to be something I'm having every single day. Now, if you're saying every single day to me, let's go do this, I might be like, whoa, all right, well, let's find a different alternative. Let's you know take and make our own ice cream and make it healthier. You know, there's alternatives to those things, but I don't want people to take the joy out of things. And I think that's really what's important is just being mindful, being mindful that, you know what? All right. If you know that you're going to be going out that evening, what can we have earlier that day? Maybe you're making a green juice. Maybe you're eating a, you know, a bigger salad with a lean part of protein as part of the diet, like eating very mindful versus going to, or going to that party, don't go on an empty stomach, like eat something prior. And then, you know, then you have some boundaries with yourself. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to eat this. Or you just say, I'm going to eat everything I want tonight. And I'm not going to maybe drink. Maybe I'm just going to have bubbly water, you know, instead. Yeah. Cause I like to consume my calories. I do not like to drink them. There's like a whole thing for me. I'm like, if I know I could eat a brownie versus a glass of wine, Brownie yeah. it is. <laughs> exactly. It's it's all boils down to choices. And that's where I really try to instill in my girls like about making healthy choices mm -hmm. and having them be mindful of that. Like, oh well, I've already ate a ton of sugar today. Do I really need that? 
Mm -hmm. And if they say yes, all right, well then what do I need to do later on? All right, mm -hmm. well then I probably just need to make sure tomorrow I eat a little healthier. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's moderation. It's yeah. really what it boils down to. Um, and then I was just going to say, being taking those mindful breaks. You know, I think that's another thing is if you know you're going into a stressful situation, all right, resetting your mindset, being like, all right, I've got to deal with Aunt Betty, you know, who is, you know, Betty's exist. A, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm not going to put myself in that situation. Yeah. And, you know, I can say hi to her, everything else. I'm not going to indulge in her conversations with her. Like, yeah, you're going to you know, set a boundary. Yeah, once again, it's a boundary. Um, and then just breathing. I mean, seriously, I tell people breath work is amazing and it's easy and it's free. And also it's also like I did this the other day. Oh, no, I did it this morning. It wasn't even the other day. So, you know, I'm big on my morning routine. Yeah. For those of you that are like new to the podcast, I talk about like how important my morning routine is and like sitting in my bed, journaling with just a little light, not much, like just being able to like gradually wake up in the day. I was joined by a little person today <laughs> and then I was joined by another little person and my mindfulness practice <laughs> required me deep breathing because they were wrestling each other next to me, which wasn't like giving off the whole like relaxation into the day vibe, right? Um, and then also like reminding myself, well, someday I will miss those little giggles yeah. and right? Like all of those things of being present um, and not having to rush anywhere. I think that that's huge too. Uh, say, so if, you, if you're in a, if you think you have to go to a toxic situation or, you know, something that might not be that positive, way do you, do you really have to? No, you don't. You don't. There, there are, there are situations. Um, I have a very complex family situation and dynamic, and there have been times where I've like, nah, I'm not going to go there. That's just not, that environment is not going to serve me. Or even, um, I think now is a great time to consider this, especially traveling with COVID and, um, multiple family stops. When we had small children, uh, we were expected to go to like three different places, um, on Thanksgiving. And, and I was like, no, mm -mm, not going to do that again. We will yeah. go one place. Um, and then if the rest of you would like to see us, we can schedule a different day to celebrate this on, but I am worn out and stressful and I, I won't have fun. I won't be fun for you to be around. And my kids won't enjoy it. Um, cause they'll be tired. So yeah you know, figuring out, you, you're not going to want to go from place to place to place to place um, right now. I, and, you know, reevaluating what that might look like. I think for us this year, it might even look like, what can we do the four of us that will be really fun uh, instead of, you know, the whole shebang that usually yeah. happens for the holidays. And I think, you know, also around the holidays is, you know, a lot of times everyone wants to be giving something. And sometimes, mm -hmm. Shannon, the best gift is just the gift of time with someone too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we don't have to always put this financial price tag on our giving. And, you know, and if you are going to give, set up a budget. Like, know what you're going to do. Start planning ahead. I mean, I buy gifts. I love to give gifts. I love to. But I also then realize, I'm like, if I'm out shopping, you know, throughout the year, I'll buy something and I'll put it away for later and save it to give to someone. So I think it's just, I, I hate when I see people like putting everything on a credit card because I'm like, you're just bringing on more stress in your life that does mm -hmm. not need to be happening. You can't and buy what, happiness. What is you create happiness oh, okay. in your own life. Well, yes. And the whole thing is there is, um, I just posted something this week. I can't remember who said it. They were talking about, maybe it was Simon Sinek about the difference between happiness and joy. Mm. And, and I think that's a really good point of, yes, you can give like stuff that's going to make someone happy, but truly it's about having joy within yourself and the joy in your heart. Also, like, would that person want you to go into debt 
to have that gift. Like if they knew that you were going into debt, I don't think that that's something that somebody would really want for you. Um, yeah. if, if there's somebody that actually cares about your well-being and your your wellness, I, I don't think that they're going to want you to go into debt knowing that you um, th- that you bought them whatever it is, right? Yeah. I also say this to parents too, like, is that toy really what that child needs or does that child just really need some extra time with you playing or doing different things? Uh, yeah. I think that those can be sometimes even more impactful. Um, we've been talking about experiences in our house yeah. versus versus things. Um, what what could we do? Because at the end of the day, none of us need any more things no, um, yes. I mean, really, mm-hmm. it, no one needs any more things because at the end of our life, Shannon, you, you hear people say when they're on their deathbed, what is it that they wish they had more of? It's, it's always time, time with people. And yeah. so that's the whole thing is just give yourself the time and the time of truly being present and not be on your phone. And that's, that's the biggest thing. And I will see that even with my girls right now, they just want my time and they want my full attention. And I think that's so important that we do these things. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I want to kind of switch gears um, into a space where we're kind of bringing that financial and wellness perspective together. Because I know that there is a, a stigma around being healthy or living a wellness life costs is more expensive. How do we make wellness more approachable from a financial standpoint? Because we know that there are some huge deficits from an income and and net worth standpoint in our country. And so how do we make wellness approachable to those that maybe traditionally don't have the education around it because the accessible tools aren't available to them? You know, that is a really good point. Um, And I know that when I lived in the city of Chicago and I worked with the junior league, we, there was people that really tried to bring in resources and that might be having a local garden and doing things um, locally, you know, sourcing our food is a really easy way for us to do those things. I think it, it's, it's something that people have to understand that we can't put a price tag on our, on our health. We really can't because you're going to pay for it one way or the other. So there's now places, I mean, Aldi's is a great place to shop at. Um, there's, I feel like more and more stores are now bringing in organic stuff. Mm-hmm. Going to farmer markets, you know, it's another great way for us to be able to source things. Um, if you've got neighbors, like what could you guys make together by buying stuff in bulk and, and creating meals together? There's another great way to cut your costs down. Mm-hmm. you can you can buy you know a grass-fed you know cow or beef and and sharing that with them amongst all these people and so it's like that when you do that it's so inexpensive like it really is um so it's it's starting to be creative and and also really looking at it from a different lens because i think so many times people say i can't afford this well you know what, let's then shift where our money is and where our priorities are. And I think that's another thing, let's reevaluate. I tell people this all the time, I'm not asking you to come up with more money to to make these healthy choices. Let's just look at where you're spending your money. Mm -hmm. I don't get my nails done. Like, I know I do. Well, all right. Well, I don't even know what it costs now, but... I don't know. I think it, I I don't know, 60 bucks. Yeah. Okay. So let's just say $60 once a month. All right. Well, where can you, you could take that $60 and you can buy, you know, a bag of organic potatoes from, you know, let's say Trader Joe's for $3.99. It's all about preparation too. And really, truly figuring out your timing of things. I think when you do those things, you know, it's people want to live in this, you know, the Amazon world, the instant gratification. We want our food now. And so what do we do? We literally grab for, you know, things that are quick and easy. Well, all right. Well, you can still make things that are quick and easy and healthy. 
It's just taking the time to prep it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Finding the time to be able to do that. Yeah. I, I also, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more from the financial standpoint of things, um, from a cultural standpoint of health too, right? There are a lot of, um, I, I believe I have a lot of friends who come from different cultures, those who have, um, you know, diets that include rice or things that maybe um, are, are told by health culture or wellness culture that they shouldn't be eating, right? Yeah. But in reality, um, what is the impact and how are we maybe um, whitewashing uh, the aspect of wellness into spaces that are, you know, authentic cultural aspects of like, is rice really that bad for us? Well, you know what? I feel like things are always changing and as no pun intended, take it with a grain of rice. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, cause you, you can really look at people will say, Oh, you should be eating brown rice over white rice. And this, I mean, we can get into the, like the nooks and crannies of all this, but really what boils down to is how are you preparing these foods is one thing and really fueling our bodies from a whole health standpoint. Mm -hmm. I think rice is great. I, I don't, I really don't think it's a bad thing. I think everyone's body is different. And if it's for a culture reason, um, there, everyone's body is also made differently. There's a reason why, you know, you look at some people that can eat really spicy food. Well, that's their ethnic background. That is their chemistry makeup, mm -hmm. you know, versus people that are Norwegian. Who think that, ketchup is spicy. Is spicy. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. They and, have ludifisk blood inside them, so they can't, you know, I'm kidding, exactly but right. like, it, but, it, it oh. is right. It, it is really true. It has something to do with your your culture. Or where um, you were brought up and the foods yeah. that you were eating as a young child and the environment that you were in, because I am a little bit more tolerant um, of spicy yeah. food, but that's because I was surrounded by it and, you know, lots of different ethnic foods as a young child. Um, so I tolerate those things a little bit better yeah. than maybe somebody who just grew up on meat and potatoes and ketchup. Oh. And I think also be willing to explore other things. So if that is your, you know, I look at my husband, he was meat and potatoes. All right, well, let's explore what these other foods could be mm -hmm. and just be open to that as well. And like, all right, so you use a lot of rice. All right, well, how can we use this in other ways? What can we do to switch up our diet? Mm -hmm. um, meaning that you sh shouldn't just have chicken and rice every single night. Mm -hmm. That's not, it's not ideal for our digestive system. We have to switch things up around. So bringing in other things is really important. So it doesn't matter what nationality you are. It's learning to eat one locally for, for ourselves. Wherever you are, we really need to eat local foods. That is what's really important. And what do I mean by that is if we are importing all of our fruit from Chile, I'll say, and we are getting, I'll, I'll just use an apple because that's an easy one. An apple from Chile versus an apple here. Well, it's being picked there. It's not truly being ripened the way it should be from the sun. So you're not getting that nutritional value for our bodies. That's why eating because it's in transport to get here in order wow. to be on the store shelves, right? Yeah. And it's also, it didn't ripen in the sun. Like think about if you've had a garden and you have a home growing tomato in the summer, how good does that taste? Oh, so good. Salt and pepper. Mm, yeah. It's fantastic. It's because of the sunlight in all those things. The nutritional value is so much higher in that. So with that, you know, start to eat more local foods. If you've now moved, like if I've moved to, you know, I have girlfriends that have now like left the country because of everything that's going on and are moving to Mexico. Of course, I'm going to eat more, more foods that are local there. Mm -hmm. You just need to adapt as well. I'm not saying if you move to Minnesota, you need to be eating lefsa and lutefisk. <laughs> and 
That's you're that you're talking about how where the food like where the food food is sourced from, sure. right? Because exactly. of the soil and because of the transportation aspect of things. Yeah. I think that goes back to like being able to really educate ourselves around where stuff is actually coming from and yes. like how it's getting to us, right? We live in this instant gratification that you and I talk about quite frequently about how like if we could just slow down and not expect everything at our fingertips. Yeah. Um, I, I told my husband he had to go to the grocery store today <laughs> instead of like actually getting grocery delivery. <laughs> so I was like, it won't be there before dinner because I forgot to press deliver. <laughs> <laughs> but like we live in we live in this space where um we forget how things go there or even like my kids they like think that it just like magically shows up at the grocery store like so telling them and showing them and I have a friend a dear friend who has an, uh, a community garden. I work with uh, a nonprofit who is teaching kids how to urban farm so that we have the ability to understand where our food comes from. I bring my kids there so that they can see exactly how food is formed. Um, and we're able to, to utilize those pieces um, in, our, in our lives every day. Yeah. Yeah. So I think those are, those are different ways people can look at it. Um, and I never want, I never want someone not to be able to have health available to them mm -hmm. because of where they live. And I, I think there's a big movement right now for people to realize that healthcare needs to be for everyone. Mm -hmm. And it really does. Um, and, but it's also getting the right people into place to educate people as well, Shannon. And that's where I'm really passionate about is like the education standpoint. When I, when I did a lot of work with the Junior League of Chicago, I love that, that we did a lot of educating. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, the community that we were educating, they were just, we were t we'd talk about finances, we would talk about food because of the way they were brought up. They're like, what do you mean this is not? healthy because that, that, that was their environment. So sometimes it's breaking those relationships that people have had with like food or with their money mindset. It's like going back and saying, all right, we're going to start over and like, really don't give yourself this label. I think we're so confined to labels and giving labels to people. And I think people can, it's, it's my, I'm not saying it's easy, but there's ways to educate yourself. There's ways we can get over some of these things. It's just, do you have the drive in you? Are you open to receiving that? And I think that's the biggest thing is if, and if anything is people need to be open. And I think 2020, I hope people have learned to have open conversations and listen more. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think also just like we have immense amount of things available at our fingertips uh, of pieces and resources that are available to us. I think sometimes maybe it can be overwhelming. So do you have any uh, specific resources or things like that that you find more helpful than just like the, you know, Google search bar or, you know, the Instagram search bar, right? Like how do we divulge what is true and what maybe is a sales tactic too. Now, are you talking in any certain area? Like, are you talking wellness? Let's talk about wellness and health, right? Like, let's talk about your, your, your area of specialty. Um, well, one, I think not using Google um, is, is a key thing. If you're going to something like Google Scholar, I tell people use that, or is it Scholar Google? Google what, Scholar, oops, which, whatever. Yeah. Um, that is going to basically like be real sources. Two, you also have to find someone that you align with, and that is okay. Um, and also just realize that you can do your own facts checks. I think people get so hung up on what is right, what is wrong, mm -hmm. versus creating the possibility of what, let's just explore, what is the possibility of this for yourself? Okay, all right, well, where can we look? Well, you know, people can come to me, 
and I will direct them into so many different areas, depending on what they're looking for. I think that's the other thing is what, what are you trying to look for? And it's almost like keep uncovering that, you know, it's asking the five whys, why, 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 until you get down to what, what is really the issue at hand. When I coach people, a lot of times, it is not about their food. It's a lot of times it's more about the emotions mm -hmm. Shannon, mm -hmm. and really uncovering some of those things more so than anything. You know, why are people stress eaters? Right. Uh, you know, why are we doing certain things? Why do people drink, you know, at the end of their day? What can we do to replace that drinking with maybe a new healthy habit? So sometimes it's just looking for that open opportunity to have a conversation with a health coach. I really, I strongly believe in, you know, looking for a certified health coach, I think is really important um, to come alongside you and to have conversations. And there's so many free resources. Like I love, you know, there's people like Dr. Axe that are out there that are really starting to, Dr. Mark Hyman, um, I'm trying to think of some other ones that, you know, for me, I'm, I'm, I get into the nooks and crannies of a genetic standpoint. I, I love Dr. Ben Lynch. He talks a lot about gene snips. And so I get, I geek out on some of those things. I'm trying to think of some common people that I think would be a really good resource, but I think just not always trusting. And I, and I I'm saying this lightly is when you read something and all of a sudden they'll say, Hey, um, fish oils are bad. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say fish oils, yes, they can get bad because of, you know, you look at going to a big box company and buying some of that off the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably is causing more harm than good. I see people right now running out and buy, buying vitamin D3. And here's the thing is they're just hearing vitamin D3 and they're buying it. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not looking and reading labels. So there's the biggest thing is reading your labels right there. If you can't pronounce the stuff, don't be eating it. If you're going mm -hmm. to the store and you can't, you don't know what it is, you probably shouldn't eat it. You know, shop on the outsides of your shopping. Most mm -hmm. of them, it's like all the produce. You know, that's probably the best thing. You know, is it, is it real food? Eat real right. food. Make it simple on yourself. Just eat real food. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that I think those are huge takeaways. Like, yeah. eat real food. Check your labels. Connect yeah. with Naomi. Like, she won't say it and plug herself. I will. I think she makes these conversations around wealth and or health and wellness um, easy and approachable and fun. Um, yes. you, you have the ability to really make some tough topics um, very approachable and. Um, you know, like, like we talked about earlier, like poop, like this is fun. <laughs> right. like, look, people, you have to talk about these things. There's a oh, reason yeah. why there's a book for our children that is called everybody poops. We can't like not talk about these things when we're older and we should actually be paying attention to our digestive systems and what are important. Uh, you, you also just kind of like talked earlier about not compromising our health or like if something is stressing us out, like why is it stressing us out? And maybe we need to take a different health habit. I think that's a great time too to revisit your financials because what is like if your job is stressing you out to the point where you have to drink every single day, maybe you need to look at your financial picture and see if that's really the job that you should be in. Because at the end of the day, they, we do live in a great country that does allow us to rewrite what our story is and rewrite what we can do. Uh, that is one really great thing that we have the freedoms to be able to do. And everybody does. Um, it's just how do you want to take it on and what are you willing to say no to in order to get to that space of wellness um, uh, from a comprehensive fashion. I don't like the yeah. word holistic. I, I like comprehensive. Right? Like we're, looking at, we're looking at it from a, 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 a big picture aspect yeah. of things. Yeah. What I other mean, what other nuggets of knowledge would you like to leave the audience with today? Oh, you know what? Have fun in life. 
laugh more. I mean, life is too short. Like truly embrace life, have gratitude. Like that is my biggest thing. Gratitude is my attitude. Um, if you're always sour, <laughs> guess what? You're gonna get more of that in your life. You are what you bring so, in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so surround yourself with people like Shannon because you are going to be <laughs> full of joy and laughter and fun. And I think that's really what's important. Like, yeah. you know what? It doesn't matter how much money you have at the end of the day if you are a miserable person, right? That is absolutely correct. Yeah. And, and you can make money and not enjoy it. And then I'm like, what is the point? Like, mm -hmm. it's just... And you, you can just buy stuff that will just like add to a Band-Aid, but it won't actually solve the real problems. We have plenty of, of self-work we can all do to make sure that we're living in a space that is happy and healthy. And, you know, our joys and level of joy comes from our dedication to being able to work on ourselves continually, right? And dedicate that time to ourselves. So I'm so grateful yeah. for you to spend this time with us. Um, oh, if people want to ha hang out with you, um, where do you like to hang out besides oh, like I your house? Because obviously we're not directing people <laughs> there. Um, I like to hang out on social media a lot. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm now running a group we just started called Transforming Women's Health, which is an excellent, excellent resource. Um, LinkedIn, you name it. I'm on a, every, I don't, I don't tweet. I'm not a- Yeah, I'm not a big tweeter either. No. Um, so really, Facebooks of the world and the Instagrams of the world. That's where I'm, I am a lot of times. All right. Well, thank you so much, Naomi. We appreciate and your wisdom. Sorry. Oh yeah. My oh my word.com, right? Yeah. Oh my word.net. Oh, dot net. See this. I, yeah. I love, I love, she literally does. I, we could go back through this podcast and count how many times she says, oh my word, but it, <laughs> it like makes my day because my kids, they, um, I say, oh my goodness, but now I'm going to, now I'm going to start, I'm going to start saying, oh my word, I'm going to have, I'm going to switch it up. Cause one of my kids was like, oh my God, the other day. And I was like, we do not say that. Oh yeah. We yeah. do not say that. Um, I think I kind of mouth washed out with soap as a kid for saying that. Not me. Um, I didn't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the very loosey goosey parenting household, the Bi family. Uh, my parents uh, mainly parented myself for a while there. Uh, I love you, mom and dad. But <laughs> there is there is not a lot of like reining in. But you know what? That's the great thing is, you know, you are who you are today because of those things. Oh, one absolutely. of my one of my mentors, she was saying that. She's like, I am who I am and I'm full of gratitude that my parents were functioning alcoholics, you know, because I had to figure things out on my own. And now look at where I am today. She's, you know, a multimillionaire woman. I mean, she figured things out on her own. Yeah. My, um, so my, my parents were really hard workers and my mom wasn't around a lot because she was working three jobs so that I could go to Catholic school. So I'm not mad at her for not doing it. She just was super tired when she got home. She didn't want to discipline me. I don't blame her. I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And it did. It instilled a lot of independence in me. So, well, thank you so much for joining. Um, we are, are happy to have you and hopefully we'll be back and we can share some other wellness tips with people. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Shannon.